everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa Larson. I'm here with Podcast Pete. Hello, Pete. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you Lisa? doing? Good. Okay, so I tried, I really, really tried to just find a shirt with nothing on it, but I just love my t shirt. So I went with Go Lakers. My not only, not only Lakers, Dodgers and Lakers. Dodgers and Lakers. Wow. They both won the, both won the series in the same year. Yeah, they did. My baby. That's not a, if that's not a LA girl, I tell you what, they don't make them. And we've got my Kobe up here, Mamba, oh, my Kobe. Okay. All right. So got my my guys, got my guys. That's beautiful. Okay. Well, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about uh, verbiage for ang for animals, humane verbiage for animals, and. You know, I think a lot of times people don't understand how important language is. And we're going to talk about the way that we talk about animals, um, as well as how to use different verbiage that moves animals towards being viewed more humanely by society. Because a lot of the words that we've used traditionally with respect to animals in referring to them in referring to ourselves in regard to them it does them a disservice have you ever thought about this pete or heard about this well i know uh that animals um pick up on our tone you know uh, on the, i'll call it the music in our voice or the music that's not in our voice. And, and they they are aware immediately when you you don't have patience, when you're short with them, or or when you really want to give them special messages, you know, whether they look good or ask them how they feel, or uh, are they ready to go for a ride? You know, there's, I guess there's inviting terminology, and then there's dispelling terminology, you know, not right now, uh, get away from there, things like that. So uh, I'm sure they pick up on tone, but I never thought about verbiage, but it's got to go with the tone. So yes, that is exactly right. And yet it's the, a little bit different topic than what we're talking about today. It is absolutely right that it, it, we should be conscious and conscientious about the, the things that we say in front of animals. We wouldn't call a person fat in front of them. We wouldn't call them stupid. So anything that we wouldn't say in front of a human, we wouldn't say in front of an animal. But I'm talking about something a little bit different. And it's about changing the vocabulary in society that surrounds animals because animals legally in most places are considered property. They're considered in the legal system no different than a chair or a light or a computer. So if somebody goes and harms that animal, a sentient, living, loving being, it's no different on the legal system than if you had stolen their car. And this is bad. This is very bad. So when we change vocabulary, we change minds. You know, I mean, it's it's politics. Politicians do this all the time. I mean, think about how long we talked about global warming. And then, of course, people used those phrases to dispel or dispute. And now they've changed it to climate change. Now we're talking about the same thing, but just the change in those terms 
allows society to think of it differently. And as we change those terms, and as we all start using those new terms, it ripples out and helps us start thinking about animals in a different way and hopefully in a way that they can be more legally protected, which is why I think changing vocabulary about animals is so important. Well, it makes sense. Uh, you know, there's 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 long been a, a, an issue about uh, what stress animals experience at our hand uh, for different uh, reasons and instances. So it makes sense that the um, the verbiage on how we how we accept that an animal is a sentient being is probably the the next thing that we're ready to really start understanding. Yeah, exactly. So there, there's times when um, I feel like I'm getting the point, and so I, I say what my view of the point is, and it's not the point at, at all, quite completely. And then you redirect me into into where the understanding that you're going with is, and then I learn again. I learn some more, uh, but I learn from where I used to be, and then where you're taking me. And I think that's a good thing. It's educating. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because I think you you mentioned before that you're representing a different part of the population that isn't around, you know, this kind of of environment all the time. I mean, I'm I'm always talking to animal lovers and always talking to the animals and having a different take on that. And sometimes I forget just how far other people are that they may not understand everything that I that I'm saying or or whatever, but you're representing a different part of that population. There's milli millions of us, I'm sure, that before we got our hands on your beautiful book, we thought that we sort of knew all there was to probably know <laughs> within our capability. You know, and some of that is true. Our capability is limited. However, it doesn't have to remain limited. Now, I, I don't know if there's uh, examples of this that we can relay, uh, you know, I think it's a very inter interesting point to make regarding property. You know, obviously someone's child isn't someone's property, they're a relative. Exactly, exactly. And yes, there are terms, there are definite terms. I mean, the first one, the first one and my pet peeve, ironically using pet peeve, <laughs> um, is the word owner. I, I wish people would get away from using the word owner because that reinforces the idea that animals are nothing more than property. We don't own them. They are our family. We have adopted them. You know, the idea that even though we do, some people do buy animals, which I'm opposed to too, which is another podcast altogether. But the idea of buying something, no, we adopt them, we give them a home, we instead of instead of owner, we are their guardian. Or their or mom and dad. We become related. Or we become related. We're their their fur parents. I so mean, there's lots of, of terms we can use but not owner. Yeah. So instead of saying I'm the dog's owner, I'm the dog's companion. And I'm the dog's companion. I'm the dog's mom. I'm the it, dog's dad. It changes the whole conversation. It changes the whole conversation. The other, one of the other uh, words that, that bothers me as well, and I have as hard a time changing my verb, verbiage as, as other people. I have to think about this consciously is the idea of using the word pets. Pet has kind of a little bit of a derogatory in some ways, like it's just like it's not that serious or 
I'm, I'm not even sure exactly how to explain what I feel about that word, because I, ironically, I love the phrase pet parent because it's it's alliterative, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I'm trying not to use it because I'm trying not to use the word pet. Instead, can we use companion animal or fur baby or fur child or yeah. our babies or whatever? Because teachers pet implies someone that's sort of even being manipulated or being manipulative. Yes. And neither one of them are op optimal. Yes, exactly. Or, so or referring to someone, uh, what can I do for you, my pet? You know, that's almost kind of. Yes, yes. And it's and it's so easy to do. And it is something that we have to consciously think of. I didn't have as much trouble getting the word owner out of my vocabulary but the word pet is a little harder for me but i i have to consciously think about that not to use it i still fall back every once in a while but the thing is if we can all just be conscious of it you know i mean they're they're animals they're not critters you know they're not they're wildlife they're not vermin or pests I mean, when we start to hear some of the phrasing and some of the words that we use regarding animals, if we can start to talk about them to other human beings in a way that is more respectful, then like I say, like a, a rock on the water, it spreads out that that respect starts to just kind of subconsciously float into the, the vocabulary of, of society, which is what we want, because until that happens, we can't really change the laws. To change yeah. those laws, we have to get the people to understand how to look through through animals eyes like we're trying to do in this podcast how to understand them as sentient beings and until we can get them to really understand that we can't get them to change or support those laws right status wise currently they exist and yet and yet in actuality they're sentient enough to read us, to feel us, to understand us, and to become great companions to us mm -hmm. for our betterment. Exactly. And you know, it's interesting because when I read animals, when I communicate with them, I will feel the relationship. And many times, most times, it's the animal is the baby and, and mom or dad is the mom or dad. But you can have different relationships and multiple relationships at the same time. They can be your baby, but they can also be your best friend or they can be your business partner. I have one one dog that I've talked to who uh, her, his mom started a chain of natural food pet stores and named it after him. There was one uh, dog that I spoke with. I may have said this in the very first podcast episode. His, his name was Jeremy. I'll never forget. He was in spirit. We were talking about adoption because the woman had actually adopted her, her human child as well. And Jeremy said, yes, humans adopt us and they take care of our physical needs. In return, we take care of their spiritual needs. Interesting. And it's so true, spiritual and emotional. I mean, that goes both ways. But but it is so true because they teach us things on a spiritual level that we may never learn in any other way. And what better way can we honor that than to try to change society's view of them so that they can have as many legal rights as they deserve because there's no reason that they shouldn't have those rights well they're certainly not property if they can exhibit such keenness to build us up and and edify us when we've had a bad day 
as we walk in because they know that's what they have to do. Property doesn't do that. A sentient yeah. being does that. Exactly. Pete, do you have a ponderings today? Well, I do. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I know that animals can establish friendships and bonds. And I know I've never communicated with them at the level that you have. And, and I know I've, I've, I've adored them. I've, I've, I've taken comfort from them. I've protected them. They've notified me of potential dangers. Uh, you know, I know there's a need, uh, well, an opportunity, let's put it, to really maybe understand more goings on with them. I'm going to try. Um, and I'm enjoying the book enough to know that there is a, a preparation or there is a, uh, a position that we could reach inside of ourselves that positions us to uh, maybe get more on the communicative level from an animal than we have. Uh, I hope it happens to me. And, um, you know, I, I love animals uh, in, in the sense that they're primarily innocent, um, they're reactive, um, but they're so attentive to our body languages and our, our tones of our voice that what better companions could we have? Mm -hmm. That's Must my pondering. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I, I could add nothing more. That's great. All right. Well, thank you, Pete. Podcast. Thank you, Lisa. Um, thank you guys for joining us. If you are enjoying this, please hit that like button and that subscribe. That would really help us out. If you want to be notified of future podcasts, the bell will do that for you. And please make your comments below. And um, if you're interested in the book, it's it's available on uh, Amazon and Apple Books. And I'll put that in the description. I will also put my contact information in the description, as well as if you're in the San Diego area, you can find cat boarding at Alicia's place. It's, it's called Cheeky's Kitty Resort. I love it. And so that will be in the information below. All right, my loves, thank you very much. I appreciate you. you. And I hope you guys will all come back. Uh, and uh, oh, I didn't say what was next on the list. Uh, we're going to be coming back with a series on euthanasia through all the steps to help you make those decisions when, when that time comes for you. So I hope you'll come and join us for those. We will, we will be working on those shortly and we will get them up in a, in a few weeks. Well, okay, transitioning sweetie. with care. Transitioning with care. Yes, absolutely. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.